Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, what is your funniest childhood memory? Oh, that's great. Uh, when a, I opened up a closet and uh, in the basement, and a, uh, a vacuum cleaner fell on my head, and it was one of the ones with like the metal grates, and it landed on my forehead, and I was bleeding profusely from my forehead. And that was funny. I think it's funny now. <laughs> fuck was i doing <laughs> ah I here's know. a better one here's a better one i got a better one i got a better one uh <laughs> so uh my dad was a collegiate track coach and there was a tradition where every year his uh it was for the women's this is important women's uh, uh track coach every year they would come by and, and sing christmas carols at our house for christmas okay. and for whatever reason every year we would like forget about it and they would just show up they ring the doorbell and they start singing and i remember one year they ring the door. I got the door and I saw, you know, these college girls out front singing. I was like, oh, I got to get my dad. I went up to get my dad and my dad uh, was sleeping naked. Uh, and he came up and he was like just butt naked. He was like, God damn it. As he like gets out of bed to put on clothes and stuff. So I got to see his balls. Okay. Best I got Christmas, a few, I got best a Christmas few ever. You saw his, uh, his twig and holly. Yeah, if you will mistletoe yeah. the mistletoe Time to kiss the under missile. the mistletoe baby that's right the missile and the toe uh <laughs> <laughs> the missile and the moose knuckle that's what we saw there that's so right baby what how late did these individuals come over in carol i don't remember the time i mean it wasn't that late but you know because <laughs> i like just you know gone to bed or whatever I, I remember what age i think we were at our new house so i must have been in high school so there was that and just my dad did he did he actually get up, put clothes on, and, and did he go out down and be like, get the fuck off my property? It's late. <laughs> no. He was like, God damn it. And then he came down. Because I remember I had the door cracked open a little bit, and they were singing, and one of the girls was like, Coach, are you coming down here? It was just very, you know, I was just like, you have no idea. His his balls are out right now. You don't want any of this. No. I advise you all to leave. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a moment where I'm just like, that is amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. This guy, this guy, uh, yeah, balls John up. John and his Christmas package. All day, baby. All day. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Justin? What's Good your uh, Lord. funniest I don't fucking childhood memory? I don't know if I have one on that level. Uh, I'll say, uh, looking again, looking back, um, funny. Now, not so funny in the moment. Uh, I think I might have told this before, but we were at Disney World when I was much younger. And we went to, is it Tom Sawyer's Island? In oh, yeah. And, yeah. Do you remember yeah. this story? I remember this one. <laughs> and so I decided I would be fun to join the cast and inter- and give the guest an interactive experience. So in Tom Sawyer's Island, if you've never been, you can go down into like, there's like a tree house and then some other stuff and you go down like some tunnels and some caves. I decided to, to post up down there and, uh, and scare people. I would jump out and I would, and then I would be like, all right, enjoy your time. And, and so I did this for, I don't know, like I, now I'm going to say maybe 15 minutes it was it could have been a half hour 45 i don't know when to you're the a kid where, time travels differently <laughs> it just yeah i don't know uh and so i finally was like all right i've done my due diligence here i think it's time to wrap my shift up i'll go on my union sanction break and i left and i got back to the mainland and found my mom and she was not happy <laughs> at all and i remember that tanked that day almost tanked the trip but i was just i was i couldn't in my mind, I'm like, I was, but no, I was, I was, I was just scaring people. I was helping, you know? And she's like, I went to security. I had, like, she, she was so livid. Looking back now, I think it's hysterical. Yeah. I had, because, I had a similar story. I think I told you this. Um, I was in a summer camp 
and we were at uh, there's a state park in my hometown, and um, we were playing hide and fucking seek in the fucking woods. In the woods. What a terrible idea! <laughs> and apparently there were boundaries, and me and this other kid uh, ignored those boundaries. All right. So at some point, you know, we were like, man, they're never going to find us. And all of a sudden we just hear game's over, guys. Come on out. Uh, please, please come out. Uh, and we're like, oh, man, they're looking for us. We kept running further through the trails. Oh, and they're no. like, like, guys, the game's over. Please. We were like, they're never going to find us. At one point, we made it back to one of the main roads. I saw one of these other girls from the camp and we're like, ha we got you. She's like, you two are in big trouble. And we're like, why? They're like, the game's been over for a long time. We've been looking for you. And I was like, like you guys were, you weren't even playing. You were just straight up missing at that point. Yeah. She's like, you guys are in big trouble. And then we came back and boy, did my mom let me have it on that one. She's uh-huh. like, how are you doing? I was like, we were just playing the game, man. Like <laughs> we were, we were we winning, were, mom. That's what we were doing. We were, we were winning. Why are you yelling at me? Yell at them. Why would we play hide and seek in the fucking woods at a state park? This is how every horror movie starts. Like, come on. <laughs> Jesus <Yeah>. Christ. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Just like when you're a kid, it, as you're older, you're like, that's a really dumb fucking idea, you know? Like, yeah. And, and oh, absolutely. When I'm looking at Natalie and she's making a choice, I'm just like, I realize I sound like such an asshole to her, but I'm like, why the fuck? I'm like, I'm like why did you do that? She's right. like, uh, I'm like, did you check first? No. And I'm like, ah, you know, and I have to remind myself, dude, you, you are a fucking idiot growing up. You so done, you done some shit. Yeah. Cut her you some done slack, some shit. man. Cut her some slack. Like uh, an yeah. example is like last night we have this dry erase board. Uh, that we have like writing notes for like things to do and whatever and she just goes up and starts erasing a note it's like one of Jill's things I go what are you doing she's like oh I'm erasing this I'm like did mom do that and then she goes mom did you do this she goes no and I was look at her I'm like what like that's she's we, hoping that she can cover her tr- I wait <laughs> why did I'm like give me the goddamn marker and I like yeah. rewrote it because she erased like two thirds of it I'm like yeah why would you erase? You have no idea. Like, you have no right. idea whether or not she did this. You just started erasing it. And I was like, get upstairs. Go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it's, it's noon. I'm like, go to bed. You know? <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's any other, like, really dumb shit we used to. I mean, I there's a ton of dumb shit. I can't think of anything that's, like, overtly funny. I just can think of a ton of dumb shit that now I think is funny, but yeah. was very, very dumb for us to have done. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I've told this story before too. Like, I used to, uh, I was fascinated with fire for whatever. Oh, the reason. matches on the side yeah, of the yeah. house. Yeah. Took a whole box of matches and I would just go on the side of the house and just use them on the brick, light yep. them, watch it burn, drop watch it, it burn. light it, watch it burn, drop it. And there's a pile of fucking matches. And my mom's like, Are you smoking? And I'm like, What the fuck are you talking about? She's yeah. like, I just, I see this, this stack of used matches out by the, by the front of the house. And I'm like, Oh, fuck. Yeah, I can see why you think that. I just like, how do you say, I'm just fascinated with fire, you know? Yeah. I I don't know, Mom. I'm having a good time right now. Hey, I get home at three o'clock. There's nobody here. And I got to keep myself occupied. What do you want me to do, Ma? What do you want me to do? Yeah. The the Simpsons is only 30 minutes long. So what do you want from me? Like, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Plenty of dumb shit. Plenty of dumb shit that I did. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Uh. No problem no with that. Sh- no, sh- no shortage of dumb shit there. No. And honestly, it, you look at it, it's like, it's amazing. We all survived, you know? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we used to, <laughs> again, like a, a, another dumb fucking thing. So I was one of the first person, people to get my license Good in boy. high school. I had I was like, because uh, I got my July 25th birthday. So I, and I was either going to be the youngest or the oldest. And my parents opted for the oldest. So they kept me two years in preschool and... That's how that worked, which worked out for me in the end with driving because now everyone looked to me to like, let's Justin's got the minivan, right? So <laughs> I got, we all had minivans. I had one absolutely. Too. I got to drive my dad's. Yeah. So we decided it would be a good idea. There was me and one other person uh, who had their license at the time. We decided there was a bunch of us. We decided it'd be a good idea to see because we just learned about the concept of a limiter on a car. And we're like, well, so, okay, so when you go in reverse, it limits how fast you can go. Like, you get up, you rev it up to a certain point, and it'll drop you down, and you can kind of... So, we were like, well, let's see how if we can hit the limiter speed going in reverse. I hate everything about this story. <laughs> On these suburban oh. Chicago streets. 
And so we're, yeah, we would just, we're like just some birds chirping, sun, some dudes in the backyard mowing his lawn, and there's a minivan, and like, I don't know, let, let's just say like an SUV, just, we're, we're just like, all right, you ready? All right, go! And we just, backwards, I've got my arm on the seat behind me, looking like this, then like trying to, in front of me, behind me, and uh, when you hit that speed going backwards, the littlest jerk of the wheel sends yeah. the car just whipping, and so... Yeah. There was some real, real close calls when we That's were doing our- That's the first our- thing I thought of. Like, man, that is incredibly sensitive. When it, it probably looked like a really bad stunt show. Like it the, did. The, the first draft of a, of a driving stunt show at Disney World. 100%. You know? Yeah. There was some real fucking close calls. That was, that was very, very dumb. We thought we were like, all right, yeah. It tops out at like 30 or 40 or whatever it was. Get ready, Fast and the Furious. Here comes Str- us. It hasn't been here a comes the yet, Strand. But, yeah. but here we go. The Strand Man. <laughs> Strandman's coming to town. Well, uh, hit us up in the comments and let us know what was the funniest thing you remember from childhood, you know? And we'd love to hear it. If it was dumb, you get bonus points. So, (laughs) Uh, uh, where did it go? I had it here. Oh, God. What? What are you missing now? What are you losing? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Doug, I think uh, on that note of doing dumb shit, I think it's time to honor one of our sponsors. Okay, let's do it. It's time for an ad read. Here we go. All right. (laughs) Scared the shit out of me. Uh, That's our ad stinger. (laughs) All right, I forgot. Um, Justin, one, two, three, or four? Three. Okay, here we go. Oh, God, it's hard to read. Uh, Okay, so. Uh Uh-oh. Looks like you woke up with asbestos all over your bed again. I know what you're thinking. Welp. Now I'm entitled to financial compensation thanks to the mesothelioma I probably contracted, but slow down. Think. You don't have much time left. There is no cure for what you have. It's just microscopic fibers in your lungs. There isn't anything anyone can do. Sure, you have various surgeries and therapies, but eventually it will all catch up. You, like all of us, will simply have to come to terms with, well with our own mortality. And that's why, with Circle Area Web Hosting, you can design a beautiful and functional website for your online business. Check out Squares, I mean, Circle Area Web Hosting today. So Doug, you had a fun idea for- uh, Time out, should- hold on, you're, you're skipping ahead, all right? Quit it. Hey guys, if you haven't already, check out youtube.com slash my get podcast <laughs> and uh, hang out there. And, uh, you know, you can see all of our stuff, all of our episodes, our shorts, all that good stuff. And uh, I host a video game stream every Friday at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, last Friday, funny story, uh, I was supposed to play games. Well, here's the thing we were supposed to play, we've been trying to play Ultimate Chicken Horse for several weeks now. Uh, uh, and it's best to do that with four people. And our fourth kind of had a, a, a commitment. We couldn't find a three-person game. So I randomly asked Natalie. I'm like, hey, do you want to do a spider hack stream? Just you and me? She's like, yeah. I'm like, great. I told everyone else, hey, stream with Nat. We're good to go. The morning of, she goes, dad, I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to hang out with mom. And I was like, cool. Thanks. I've literally, it's torched everything. But yep. that's cool. She's like, I'm sorry, dad. I hope that you're not mad. I'm like, hey, if you don't want to do it. It's totally cool. No big deal. So I played Vampire Survivors, which is a bullet hell game where it's just like it starts off calm. And by the end of it, it's just if you have epilepsy, it's probably going to drive you crazy. It's so much shit's flying at the stream. Yeah. And wouldn't you know it? Natalie watched the whole stream uh, <clears throat> from the comfort of our living room and was chatting on Jill's phone, <laughs> telling me I'm a great dad and everything. I'm like, that's awesome. You could be up here right now, like playing with me. But again, it's all good. In the mind of a child, what goes down? It's all good. But uh, good news is after the stream, uh, it, it started playing other streams. And it was it started playing the one of her and I. We played spider Hack. She's like, Dad, this Friday, I want to play spider Hack with you on the stream. I'm like, are you sure? I need uh-huh. you to lock this in. <laughs> <laughs> and Natalie, I've heard that before. She seems pretty excited about it. So we're going to we're gonna do that. So She just, just needed to be reminded how much fun it was. That's right. all it is. Yeah. Right. So this Friday, hopefully, we'll be doing a spider Hack stream. That's at 8 p.m. Nice. Central right here at youtube.com slash podcast, and also check the link in the description for our discord our patreon our merch at redbubble all that 
good stuff. All right. Segment ended. Justin, you were saying really something really nice about me. Go ahead. You had a great idea for uh, a game we could play today. Yeah. I'll just kick it straight back over to you now. Cool. So for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Dungeons & Dragons is a thing. And uh, I really enjoy playing it, uh, mostly DMing it. I'm having a real rootin' tootin' good time right now with my group as we're playing Curse of Strahd. Super fun. And I started thinking, uh, I make these jokes often in real life um, about abilities and attributes. And in Dungeons and Dragons, when you create a character, or basically any creature in the game, has there's a certain base set of six attributes. There's strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And within those uh, are different skills and things that are attached to those attributes. I started thinking, what if Justin and I could like do our own sort of behavioral assessment and physical assessment based on these characteristics. So Justin and I have on our own basically done each other. We finally did it. We did each other. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That one's for you, Justin. Um, Justin didn't like that one. Uh, (laughs) Uh, uh, so anyway, um, I wrote out Justin's attributes. Justin wrote out mine and we're going to go through them and we're going to give our reasons for this. So just so you know, the attributes can go as low as zero and as high as 20. A 10 is average. Anything above 10 is above average. 20 is like, we're not getting 20s in any of our stats. I don't, I think that's pretty, pretty easy to state. So so um, wait, you said 10 is average? 10 is average. Okay, got it. Did you do this right, Justin? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. My, so, my disclaimer on all of this is if you are a D&D freak, uh, kudos, because I enjoy it as well. But I am not steeped in all of the D&D-ness. So if you are a D&D uh, lover and uh, I've done something wrong here... <laughs> Take it uh, easy. Save it. I don't want to hear it. Or you know what? Let me hear it. And uh, then, you know, go off and we can all see that you're uh, uh, you're smarter than I am in regards yeah. to this. Like, so, I, the, the thing that I didn't know is I'm like, if you get, like, like, if you get, if you have a certain base number, is there a limit to how high the skills numbers can go? Or low? Like, if you're a, if you're a, like, if you're a... Like if you're like a 14 and something, can you have a negative skill number? No. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Thing. Here's the thing. I left this open because the math on this doesn't necessarily I, yeah. equate to anything. And we'll, I'll talk, we'll kind of talk about it as we go. So, yeah. um, Justin, do you want me to go first and I'll break down your skill set and then you can do me? Yeah. Do you want to go one by one? Like we'll, we'll each do strength and we'll each do dexterity or do you want to run through kinda, the whole I list? I kind of think I feel like it makes sense to do like all of them for one person and then we'll go all back right. around and do, do it all for the other person. All right. So Justin, starting off with strength. So I feel if like anyone's not familiar, strength, this. basically it measures bodily power, athletic training, and the extent to which you can exert raw physical force. Animal magnetism. <laughs> Justin, I gave you a 10. I think you're average. But a skill within strength is, a, is athletics, and I gave you a plus two. Here's why. Tell me. Um, you have always had an interest in doing athletic stuff. You're working out now. You like to box. You mm-hmm. like MMA. So, And if push comes to shove, literally, <laughs> I think you could, you know, you could do some stuff, right? You know? I would like you, to you, think so. You know, so I, I I think I think you're average. You know, and I think I think you, but you've got you've got a boost to athletics because you are active. You know what I mean? So what is the uh, the? Uh, I feel like we should like yeah, like give it ex- ex- examples of of athletics. This is what helped me when I went through. Yeah. I went through every single one of these and looked at examples yes. for each one. So athletics, according to D and D, is basically uh, it covers difficult situations you encounter while climbing, jumping, or swimming. So examples would be like. Attempting to climb a sheer slippery slippery cliff, uh, you try to jump an unusually long distance, uh, or you struggle to swim or stay afloat in treacherous currents and things like that. So in that world of D&D, that's what applies. When I think of our world yes. of normal, boring life, I'm like, Justin likes to work out, and he likes to box, and, uh, you know, he's, he's done that stuff. So and, and, and 
Well, we'll get to, we'll get to it when we get to dexterity. But there's yes. some other things that feed into that. So I think you're a ten on strength. All right. Cool. Thank Next you. up, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna thank you on all of these. Next up is dexterity, and that measures agility, reflexes, and balance. Oh, wait. should we go through what we? Because we rated ourselves on these too. Yes. Well, so when okay, like, so what do you think you are for strength? And so I gave myself an eight. Oh, this is going to be funny. How we are like we are going to be so mean to ourselves. <laughs> but I gave myself a plus two in athletics as well. Hey, okay, all so right. There's the, there's, there's the link up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I didn't basing these on. I'm like, I it makes sense that ten is average. If typically things in D and D go to a twenty, I just was like mm, eight. That sounds right. But. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Go ahead. So that means you get a negative one modifier on your rolls. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next up is dexterity, which is dexterity measures agility, reflexes, and balance. For this, I gave you a 10. I think you're average. I think you're average with that. Under the dexterity banner are three skills, acrobatics, sleight of hand, and stealth. Acrobatics, I gave you a plus one because you did gymnastics when you were younger. <laughs> <laughs> I think that carries over. I don't know. Have you seen the photos? <laughs> I have. And obviously, you you were in the leotard. You did it. So acrobatics plus one. Slide of hand. I was in. I was in the leotard like a like a, a whole tin of dough, kind of coming out of a jewel bag. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. You competed, right? <laughs> you, you, you're correct. I did compete in one in one meet. Yes. Plus one, baby. Plus one. <laughs> Slide of hand plus one. I think you you have some decent sleight of hand skills. They're not expert level, but you can you can pull off some trickery. Slide of hand is basically magic. like can you can you like you know steal something, take something without anybody noticing or whatever. Stealth, basically your ability to hide. I gave you plus one. I think just in general, you know, based on your size and stuff like that, you could you could hide. You know, okay. obviously you did it at uh, Disney World when you were younger, so you were hiding hey. and scaring people. So yeah, I you know. I have some uh, I have some advantage to that, you know. Yeah. Right. All right. Don't forget Just, with sleight of hand, uh I did perform at my uh psychiatrist's uh kids' birthday party when I was younger. I did not know this. I did not know this you, at all. No, no, no. I remember telling you this and you're like, that seems wrought with issues. I don't recall this story at all. We'll have to talk about that later. All right. I'm gonna put in that one. <laughs> Okay. What did you rate yourself on dexterity, Justin? I had I gave myself a 10. Nice. Uh acrobatics. Uh now that you s- say it, uh I maybe uh, but I gave myself a, a zero. So uh-huh. on, uh, just neutral, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh sleight of hand, I gave myself a negative 1, a minus 1 <laughs> because I feel like I would get real nervous as I was going to do it and I would okay. I would I would lose my I would lose my head about it. I feel like I'm anytime it comes down to something where like the pressure's on, I'm right. always worried like I'm gonna fuck this up. Uh yeah. stealth I gave myself a plus two. Okay. All right. I think I, I, I feel like I could uh again, I hid pretty damn well in Disney World. So you did. I think that's yeah. fair. I think it's fair. Next up it's constitution. There's no skills associated with this. But constitution is essentially your it measures your health, stamina, and vital force. I gave you a twelve on this one, and I gave you twelve for three reasons. One, you ran a marathon twice, so that's a big deal, right? You got to be able to do that. Two, you can hold your booze, so that's a big deal. And three, you when you have lack of sleep, you can actually do okay. Like you can sustain <laughs> yourself, you can you can function pretty well. So like sure. you're. You're pretty pretty solid. So twelve is good, and in the world of D and D, like anything that's uh, on the evens above, like you basically get a modifier. So that gives you like plus one to your constitution rolls. So so you so, on the odds you don't get a, a modifier. No, interesting. See, yeah. didn't know this. Okay, yeah. See, so yeah, I think your I think your cons your constitution is twelve. So cool. Uh, I gave myself a ten, uh, but based off because again, I was looking at all the like what they said. Goes yeah. with constitution of like, you know, you can uh, super hold holding your breath, your breath march. That. Yeah. Go, <laughs> go without sleep. Survive with so all those things, uh, I gave myself a 10. But now that you brought up the marathon, I maybe I would bump myself up to a 12. My rationality was sometimes I go a whole day without eating. Uh, just I lose track of time and I'm like, why oh, not? Fuck. Right. Yeah. It's fuck, fuck. Because I can do fuck it. Fuck you, world. It is in no way, shape, or form that I'm uh, like, oh, I should do intermittent fasting. It's just because I'm an idiot and I have poor time management sometimes. Uh, yeah. And I said I can function on low sleep. I don't like it, but I can do it. 
Okay. So same as you, I had that same yeah. same thought. I'm like, yeah, I can. Yeah. I think mine's right. Yours is wrong. Yep, All right, exactly. moving on. Uh, intelligence. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, your mental acuity, accuracy of recall, and the ability to reason. I gave you a 12. Well, oh, I one. thought you were going to say a 1. No, how dare you? So uh, skills associated with with this are arcana, which we're just going to... I put that as a 0 because we don't deal in magic. So, you know, sorry. <laughs> history, I put you as a 0. I'm like, you don't seem like a big history buff as far as like, you know, remembering history and stuff. Investigation, I gave you plus 3. Because Ooh. you are the equivalent of Tank in the Matrix. When it comes to like searching <laughs> shit up, you're like, hold on, let me see if I can find this. And you just go into investigation mode. You, you find shit like crazy. You're so good at, at, at finding things. Uh, nature, I gave you plus two. You seem like, you know, you're familiar with nature. You've been in nature. You know, you're not an expert in it, but, you know, yeah, you, you have an affinity to it. And religion, plus one, because you were raised. Uh, you were raised Catholic. So, you know. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can, Recall that sort of stuff. So, and going into our world too, like intelligence, you're you're really good at, um, you know, like audio stuff. You're really good at uh, uh, film things, video things, and stuff like that. So you have a really great uh, intelligence when it comes to that sort of stuff, and you're pretty good at reasoning as well. So, thank you. I think you were a solid twelve on that one. Thank you. I, uh, I I I bumped myself up a little bit on this one. I gave myself a fourteen. Good for you. I said, but mostly for being able to reason, taking into account. I thought you say mostly because I can read. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because I read good. So, <laughs> our Sinea, uh, uh no, I, uh, mostly being able to reason. I was going back to my days in, uh, in, um, tech support for ah. the software company. And I was like, go. some of the, some of the absolute moronic things that I was presented with, the fact that I was unable to untangle those knots. I got. I gave myself. Uh, I gave myself a little bit more on that. Arcana. I did zero. History. I did a one because I. Okay. I like history and I. I know a little bit, but I'm not anywhere near like a true history buff. Mm-hmm. Investigation. I gave myself a plus two. I said, but it depends on what I'm investigating. If that's, that's fair. I have walked into a room before and completely ignored something on the ground. I was like, ah, shit, that's in that's here. That's more. That's perception. That's less investigation. Yeah. All right. Well, perception anyway, is just natural yes. ability. To, yeah. Yeah. The the tank thing was was a, a good nature gave myself a plus two because I I do enjoy being outside after moving to Michigan very mm-hmm. familiarized myself and religion I gave myself a zero <laughs> <laughs> no you can't you have to give yourself a plus one I have to all right you were raised Catholic it's part of you whether you like it or not okay you can't take it well, away you're good with persuasion wait till we get to you you persuaded <laughs> me just now <laughs> all right next up is wisdom. Which is basically <laughs> how attuned you are to the world around you and represents perceptiveness and intuition. So for this one, I gave you a 14, which is a plus two to your overall stat roll. Uh, within that, you have a few skills. There's animal handling, which I gave you plus three because you know how to train and raise dogs. You have a couple <laughs> dogs that you know how to – you're very good. Your dog, your dog Abby's off leash, and I think that's really impressive. Most people can't do that unless they have good animal handling, so good job there. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Insight, I gave you plus four. You're really good at reading other people, me in particular. You pick up on the slightest things with me. Like sometimes you'd be like, hey, man, you okay? Like even when you're just reading my words, when we chat with each other, you're like, yeah. I think something might be wrong with Doug. You're very good at that. So you have a Thank very you. good intuitive sense. Medicine, plus zero. Um, you know – Whatever. You're not a doctor. That's cool. You know? Uh, we, perception. We can't be great. Yeah. Perception, I think, plus four. I think you're pretty perceptive on things as far as, like, your environment and, and looking for this, that, or that. Also, because you're super fucking curious. Whenever I'm known, you're That's, like, hey, there's a door. I wonder where it goes. You just go inside, you know? That just is... Like, <laughs> that is me. Yeah. You're very hey, much like, mm, I see how, this. What, what how, this many times, how many times have I said, do you think we could get on the roof? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. It's like every building. It's like I wonder how we get to the roof here. And he's just like John McClane said through the vents and everything like that. So it's very interesting. And survival, which is essentially your ability to like exist in in nature in a sense of like um, you know if you're trying to follow tracks, hunt game, guide your group through the frozen wastelands. Uh, I give you a plus one because you've been to Banff. So <laughs> and you were like, hey, don't go this time of year because there's bears. So I'm like, that guy knows. What's up? That's survival and nature together. So there you go. He, know, he knows about bears, this he guy. He knows this, this fucking thing, man. <laughs> That's good. All right. I appreciate that. I gave myself a 12 on wisdom. Uh, animal handling, I also have myself at a plus two. 
Uh, insight, I feel like maybe I should have given myself more. I had myself at a plus one. Uh, insight, again, was, what is it? Checks whether you can determine true intentions of a creature, such as when searching out a lie or predicting someone's next move. So I, there was another one that I thought was more about, uh, like, intuition or something. But this one, I when I read it, determine the true intentions of a creature, I feel like I can be duped. I'm, I'm, uh... I've got like good intuition about like f- like how someone's doing or how someone's feeling, but I feel like easily like if you really sold me, I'd be like, all right, he's probably telling the truth. So that's that's <laughs> that is that is the other part of insight is being able to yeah. tell if someone's full of shit. So, so. I gave myself a plus one yeah. on that one. Medicine uh, plus twelve. Um, there you go. Yep, because I've done a lot of time on WebMD. Uh, no plus zero on that perception. I actually gave myself a negative one. Uh, a minus one. I said normally. I said, but it's plus four if we're talking about spotting bugs because <laughs> I can see a bug across the room. And Beth is like, "How did you find that bug?" Right. Yeah. Okay. Especially Very if good. it's a spider. I know. It, I just know where they are in the house. Yeah. And then survival. I gave myself a plus two because now I know which way rabbit tracks, which way they're hopping. Mm, look at that. So at add guy. that to the bear knowledge. There you go, man. Rawr. All right, last up, charisma, which is pretty straightforward, but it basically it's your ability to interact effectively with others. So it includes factors such as confidence, eloquence, and can represent a charming or commanding personality. And within charisma are four skills, uh, which are deception, intimidation, persuasion, and performance. Overall, with charisma, this is your power stat, Justin. I gave you a 16. Oh, look at it. It's your power right. stat right here. That gives you a plus three. On your roles and your charisma roles, because because right. you are a very charismatic person, and I will say, if anyone saw how many people were at your surprise birthday party, <laughs> listen, people don't show up to a birthday party, a surprise one at that, uh, if you aren't charismatic and charming, and the way you also worked the room while you were there, made sure you spent time with every person, and I was like, this is a this is a charismatic motherfucker. And if you all have ever listened to or watched this podcast, you know Justin's absolutely charismatic. He's an absolute Stop. delight. He puts people at ease when he's talking to them for people he doesn't know. You easily have you have no problem, like in my perspective, walking up and just talking to people and, and bridging that that gap or whatever. You're very charismatic. This is absolutely your superpower. And when it comes to deception, you're pretty good at deception. I give you plus four. When you want to be mischievous. I weave baskets well, yeah. Yes, he does. Justin's pretty good at uh, for comedic effect being deceptive, which is very good. I, I thought back to the uh, when we did Justin plays video games Among Us, <clears throat> and how you were just like playing oh, dumb yeah. the whole time. And you're like, I don't know what's going on, as you were the uh, imposter like five times. And you're like, I don't know, man. What's Way going too on many here? times. Right. Uh, intimidation. I gave you a plus one. I don't think you're super intimidating, but I think you know you can raise your voice. You know, and maybe maybe that'll you know get some people. If you shadow box a little bit, that might, you know, might, might, might throw somebody off. We'll see. Oh, this guy. This guy's throwing some wicked hooks. Yeah. Look out. Wicked hooks. Uh, persuasion gave you plus four on that because I think you can be very persuasive. Um, and then performance, obviously plus four. You did improv. You do this. You played in a band. Like, you obviously know how to perform. So, overall, this is your stat, brother. Whew, thank you. I, uh, I, I I went a little less on this for myself. I gave myself a 14, but uh, still, I agree. I feel like I, I've got this uh, uh, pretty good here. Uh, deception, I gave myself a plus two. Intimidation, I gave myself a plus zero. Um, <laughs> because, again, I'm like, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I can raise my voice, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, persuasion, I gave myself a plus two. And performance, I'm in the same uh, boat as you, a plus four. So I've, I feel like that's... That's definitely yes. I, I enjoy uh, I enjoy entertaining the folks. Yes. That's what I like doing very, very much. So yeah. based on your stats here, Justin. Yes. I would say you would be if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, I would say you'd make uh, you make a really good bard. I was I was thinking that. Yep. Bards are basic charisma, possibly <clears throat> a warlock. They are based okay. in, in charisma. Um, potentially. With my wisdom score of 14 for you, you could possibly be a druid or a ranger. Okay. Um, or cleric, but you wouldn't want to be cleric. You're not you're not that devoted to no. the pantheon of gods. But I'd say bard is probably uh, probably, I could, probably I could where be, you're going. I could fuck with a bard. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, I go fuck with yeah. a bard. So, Justin, you just created your own real life character in D and D, and it's you. This is Justin yes. Strandland. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for I'm ready for my next adventure. We should All do right. a real life, a, a, a real D and D, a session of D and D, a one a one shotter that's mm-hmm. that's set in the real world, and it's just us. That's, yeah, that those those uh, types of games exist. <laughs> Ah, of course they do. I don't have any new ideas. <laughs> where's Where's the creativity? Put me at a plus zero on that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ah, All right. Let's turn the tables. Turn the tables. Mr. Doug E. Fresh. So we got strength. Your overall strength score. Uh, I put you at a, a 15. Okay. All I right. I feel like you got, uh, you got some... Uh, it's partially... Your size and partially because you lift just about every day. So I feel like the 15, I don't know. I just see you as like uh, able to hulk out if you need to. Athletics, I put you, I went back and forth on this one. And mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out, I'm like, well, I, maybe. he's big. So can he climb a sheer or slippery cliff if he needed to? <laughs> you know, but then I was like, no, nah, you know what? Athletics falls under a lot of things. So I gave you plus two on athletics. Thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, I did 14. For strength, okay, and I did athletics plus four because mostly because like I did a lot of sports growing up. You you did it a lot of track and field, so that's yeah. I did track and field, I did wrestling, I did football. At one point, I did basketball, so I was I definitely some of those skills still exist there in that regard. So I completely forgot you did all that shit. So okay. you know what? It's in real good, time, I'm going to amend this. It's a plus four now. How about that? That's how this game it's works. All good. We were pretty we were pretty close on that one. It's yeah. weird giving yourself a buff to your stats. We were like, this feels gross. You know what I mean? Oh, I went through. I had all of these locked in for myself, and then I went back through again after I sat with them for a while, and I'm like taking them all down. I don't. <laughs> I, I went way too hard on myself, and I I am not as good as I think I am. <laughs> it is weird though because you're just like I don't want to brag yeah you're right I don't know man <laughs> yeah all right dexterity for Doug Doug's dexterity measures agility reflex and balance I gave you a 10 I feel like you're average uh, average on this um, acrobatics again because of your size I feel like that's just as you're neutral on that you've got neutral acrobatics your sleight of hand I gave you a plus one because you got you're, big hands you're so very you can, kind you can palm things <laughs> You'll never see this big hand reaching that's, for anything. You know? That's right. No, but once it has it, good luck seeing through it. <laughs> Where's my right? thumb? You Where's, don't know. You don't know. It's behind this mitt. <laughs> and then stealth. I'm sorry, but I gave you a negative eight. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, that's all very fair. I think it's all very only fair. Be, only because I have heard you more than once talk about how you are impossible to hide or like <laughs> just the image of you in a train. I'm like, that's enough to give you a negative. There he is. There he is. (laughs) I also gave myself a dexterity score of 10. I gave myself a plus one to acrobatics just because I was kind of going off of like wrestling and uh, shot put and stuff that requires a little bit of like agility to do that stuff. Um, Slide of hand plus zero. I'm not good at doing anything. I'm too big. Everything I do is just very big and noticeable yeah. stealth i gave myself a negative two but okay. i also put disadvantage meaning that i would roll twice and take the lower number right you usually do that if like your character is wearing like heavy armor because it's so fucking loud so i'm yeah. like whatever i do uh it's gonna be bad like it's gonna be really really bad because i'm so fucking tall i'm fucking just like a big guy yeah and also it's just like my knees creak my ankles snap i breathe <laughs> loud like when I step, it's just like if there's even the slightest creak, it's like like there's no way I, I wherever I, you're crouching, there's just a pool of sweat that slowly exactly. leaks out onto the yeah. Wherever we're going as a group, I'm pulling that stealth score down. So that's how that's working. So. I see, and this is where I was like, I don't know if a negative eight's a thing. <laughs> so I'm that's, just gonna uh, that that's brutal. I don't know if that is a thing. Negative two is pretty fucking bad. So okay, see you know. again, I have no context for what but actual hey, numbers. It's should all the be. same. I had a disadvantage but on a two this. With so, you know? I feel like we're yeah. in the same. The exactly. same boat with that, yeah. We got it, yeah. All right, so constitution. This one, I I, I gave you a little bit of a hit, only because uh, I so I gave you an eight for constitution. Oh, okay. And I said you walk a lot, exercise days daily, and eat pretty clean. I said, but if you don't eat, you get cranky. I do. If you don't sleep, you get very cranky. <laughs> you know, and it, if you it's, mm-hmm. and you just straight up don't drink, so. I feel like you, if you, if it came down to like, 
oh, we're in this tavern and someone challenged us to a drinking competition, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, I have no tolerance. <laughs> I gave myself a 12, and the only note I have was I don't get sick very often. <laughs> Which is true. I don't remember the last time I've yes. been sick. So, but, <laughs> but when you weigh that with everything else, I'll I'll bring it down to a ten. I think a ten's fair. I think a ten's a ten's fair. But those other things, you're right. I do not do well on little sleep at all. And yeah. when I'm hungry, just, I'm hungry. The, the I'm hungry hunger, all the time. The hunger and the sleep thing. Were, when I read those on the stat sheet, I was like, oh man, those two things. Yeah. <clears throat> those are those are against Doug real yeah. hard. Those are real hard to, to go against. Yeah. All right. So in, <clears throat> excuse me, your, um, your intelligence, you have two, well, I guess you have three uh, kind of superpowers. Your intelligence was the superpower one that I gave you. Oh, wow. This okay. one here. So, and I'll, I'll explain how I put mine slightly different than you did. So intelligence, I gave you an 18. <laughs> it's too kind. It's too kind. I'm going to let that sit for a second. That's too kind. <laughs> an 18. And here's why. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mental acuity, accuracy of recall, and the ability to reason. So again, recall and reason. This is this is where I was like, oh, no, Doug's an 18. I couldn't in good faith give you a 20, but it's as close as you can get in my mind. Because you can recall s- the stupidest, most detailed, smallest, minute thing from a comic that you read 10 years ago and you're like oh yeah i remember well it's like when in the sandman and i'm like how do you remember this <laughs> so to that end arcana i gave you a plus four okay and i understand that we don't have spells in our real life but the fact that you can walk through this sheet without like when you were dming and you were like mm-hmm. well actually eric you've got this spell slot and you know uh, kaya mm-hmm. you've got this one you you have you do have a recall for spells whether or not it's it's real, you can do it, and you hold on to those things. So you get a plus four in Arcana. Okay. Uh, <laughs> history, I gave you a plus four as well, and here's why. Right? Uh, historical events, legendary people, ancient kingdoms, past disputes, recent wars, and lost civilizations. Again, if you take in the totality of all the things we talk about, all the, uh, well, let me tell you about why this Marvel character X, Y, or Z, or let me tell you about why this person, also the story you're writing. Yeah. True. The amount of history and lore that you remember off the top of your head for that one. Don't you play a, a game called Civilizations? I do. Right. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so again, I give you a plus 10. Based on all that, if you put it in the world of nerd, it's a plus four. Investigation, I gave you plus two. Uh, you might do just, uh, yeah, I thought you were just, you're good at that. <laughs> you're not a plus four, but you're, you're good. Uh, nature, I gave you a plus four and here's why. Watersheds. Tell me what they are, Doug. <laughs> Grassy waterways and watersheds. Grassy waterway. Here's the thing. I legitimately Googled watershed, grassy waterway. And I was like, the picture of the watershed looks more like what Doug described. <laughs> I had both. I could never remember which one it is. So what is it, Doug? So so it's grassy waterways is what I remember to drive Jill crazy because yep. it basically prevents erosion. Uh, it's like these grassy areas between fields that prevents runoff from soil and, and rain and things like that. Again, plus four nature right there. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Jill she's going to get pissed when she hears that. <laughs> Say, hey, you know that thing that drives you nuts? Justin yeah. remembers it and that's a plus four to him. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> And you know you always talk about natural uh, weather cycles too, so that's just yeah, a, a thing. Of yeah. And yeah. then I gave you a plus one on religion because you're a fundy Christian. Uh, you know what? That's fair. That's, yeah, that's part of my charm. Um, uh, that's so funny. Tr- truthfully, with religion, because of again all the, you're like, oh well, this person's a cleric, and then they did this and this, and if you, oh, when that back when this thing happened, like you again, you you've got these ancient religions that are made up, but they're all up there for you. Yeah, well, it's so funny. Uh, I gave myself an intelligence score of 14. <laughs> Jesus Christ, okay. Um, all of the skills were zero, except for nature. I gave myself a plus one. Was the it only for reason why I gave myself The only reason why I gave myself a 14 was because of Practical Doug, for the sake okay. of reasoning. <laughs> 
But all those things you said were very, th- it's funny how like I was like completely, yep. yeah, you want me to recall history on completely useless information? I got you. You want yeah. me to, in the other room, I hear a song playing on TV and I'm like, now are you watching How to Train Your Dragon 2? You know, I did that the other day because I could yeah. tell from the score. It's like, yeah, yeah I remember useless shit, yep. you know? So that's, that's fair. I, I appreciate that. That makes me feel good. I never would have given myself an 18, but thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so for wisdom, I gave you a two. No, uh, for, <laughs> for, for wisdom, I gave you a 12. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and so wisdom uh, reflects how attuned you are to the world around you, represents perceptiveness and intuition. So gave you a 12. Um, animal handling, I gave you a plus two because you've had cats, you have a dog, you, you know... Uh, have you're a child. Pretty, you're pretty furry yourself. You have a child. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. I feel like you can handle animals. Uh, you've, you've dealt with... You dealt with a, a whole bunch of animals coming into that uh, hotel, so hell yeah, you know, we all we all know that. Uh, insight, I gave you a plus two to insight, uh, and again, that is uh, whether or not you can sniff out a lie or predict someone's next move. I feel like he is as good as I am at, at deception. I feel like I really have to turn it. I have to crank it up to get you because you can sniff out a lie pretty easily. You're like, nope, that doesn't. Something's not right here. That doesn't track. I don't like this. Something's not right. Uh, Medicine, I gave you a negative two. um, And I wish I had put a note on there because I had a funny reason and now I cannot stabilize dying companion or diagnose an illness. You know what? I'm going to give you a zero because I... Yeah. The only reason I'm going to give you... I'm allowed to give you a negative two is if I can have a funny reason with it. And I forgot. That's fair. Perception, I'm giving you a plus one and survival a plus one. Fair enough. Uh, for wisdom, I give myself a 10. Animal handling, 2. Insight, 4. But I was thinking of insight from being able to read people, but when you take it by the what this is, being able to sniff out lies, I think yeah. it has to as well. And if you're reading rest. people, I'd, I'd put another 2 yeah. on there for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but We're pretty, we're pretty the right on okay. that. Alright, then charisma. Uh, here's another one. Uh, uh, I would say this is your second slot uh, superpower. I gave you another 15 on charisma. Uh, deception. I gave you plus four. You're a crafty bastard. I feel like you can. I feel like you can deceive with the best of them. Um, wow, that's interesting. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I feel especially the absolute because opposite. I'm the worst at games of deception. <laughs> well, it's not. It's see, I don't take it with games. It's funny where again, yeah. where like you think like, what is your point of reference when when scoring these? Mm-hmm. So for me, my point of reference was on the podcast. When we when we improv something or when we lean yes. into something, you're like, oh yeah, no, that's this person. And oh, well, let me like the whole reason why. And you'll go down a whole bullshit story, and you'll yeah. just it'll spill out of you, and none of it is true. And it's based on one nugget of an idea that we yeah. found. Uh, I feel like, and then there there have been times where after the show, I'm like, was that were you was that serious or? And you're like, no. Uh, intimidation. I gave you a plus six. Oh, I, okay. I said, but you would have to remove your glasses, so you would need to use an action for a disguise. I like that. Well done. Way to use the mechanics of the game. Well done. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you're you're a big dude. You know, you're yes. a teddy bear, but it, mm-hmm. because you're so big, you pull and you're If bald. I wanted to flip that switch, it's I've only done it a handful of times in my life. Yes. I flipped that switch and I've gotten great results. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, you're you're a big guy. You're bald, and mm-hmm. you you're and you're loud. So like, yeah. if you mesh those together and remove the glasses, uh, I think that uh, it's good. Uh, persuasion. I gave you a plus six because you okay. have persuaded me to do some dumb shit. And performance. <laughs> I gave you a plus six for all the same reasons. Uh, improv. You did Second City. You did I O. You went through conservatory. You did acting. You you know are doing this. You uh, facilitated trainings for most of your, you know, uh, professional career. You you perform and and you uh, and you can hold an audience. So that's fair. Uh, that's so fair. Doug, based off of all these things, you are uh, a barbarian, <laughs> or or an owl bear. If the intelligence is there, then I'm probably leaning more towards like oh. wizard, possibly. I could see. But, can you be a well, barbarian wizard? Ooh, no. I, I, like, could be a multi, I could be a multi-class, I guess, to some Are degree. there, like, jacked wizards out there? <laughs> I mean, there? Of course there are. I mean, what was those, that disturbing AI trend of, like, uh, Harry Squatter? You know, like, the Oh, the, the yeah, no. Out. <laughs> Don't like that either. 
<laughs> You're a squatter, Harry. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> <laughs> those are weird videos. Weird, very weird videos. Yeah. Um, I mean, this could be. Um, yeah, this is actually really, this is a weird makeup because a lot of this stuff doesn't necessarily mesh together. Uh, but it could be it could be barbarian. Uh, Charisma's in there, uh, which is good. That could be like you know paladin. Ranger? Paladin could be good in that one. Okay. Um, Ranger's more wisdom based. It is. Okay. Pa- paladin could use strength. Paladin could use charisma. You know, intelligence. You know, would be good for some other stuff. So um, the constitution sucks if you're a, if you're a barbarian because uh, you know. Constitution's like one of the best things because you gotta have a lot of hit points to uh, survive. So if my constitution's ten, maybe doing some damage, but uh, won't be coming out the other end uh, too too good. So well, I oh, that's, a, a, that's an interesting combo. Ash Fallbreaker was a fifteen on the constitution, and he was yeah, a barbarian. I, yeah, you have me as a ten. So <laughs> oh, I thought you I thought you were saying I got it. Never mind. I yeah. thought you were saying. Constitution for a barbarian is usually not good. No, it's good. It's, I gotcha. They, they that it's usually strength followed by constitution for them. Because I gotcha. Okay, got they it. don't typically wear a lot of armor, so they have the most just pool of hit points. So they just soak up you know damage with their hit points and whatnot. Yeah. So like yeah, low constitution. This is a weird uh, stat block to work with for a character. <laughs> Very weird stat block. See, I told you, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's awesome. I love it. It's so much fun. This is fun. This is great. So, this was gang, cool, yeah. let us know what you think. Are our stats accurate? Do we yeah. do it right? And what do you think your stats are? Do you do it? Think about yourself. What do you think is uh, is your is your is your stat block for for D and D? If you were a character, we'd love to hear about. It. And then let us know what class you'd be based on your stats. It'd be great. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap up with a game, Justin. Are you ready? Oh boy, I am. I am. Yeah, I'm fucking spent. But let's do it. All right, so here we go, gang. It's, it's that time again where it's time for improv job interview. Justin is going to be interviewing for a job. He doesn't know what this job is. I do. But he's at the interview, and I'm going to be asking him interview questions that will hopefully be leading him to this job that he is interviewing for. At the end, I'm going to ask him a series of questions. At the end, I'll be like, are you excited to... Take on this job as a, and then he's going to say what it is. And hopefully, we've both done our jobs right. He'll guess what it is. But just like last time, this job ain't plumber, gardener, you know, whatever. It is, this is interesting. It's unique. What was my so, job last time, Doug? Your job last time was an elf interpreter. Exactly. So we'll see. We'll see how you do on this one. Are you ready, Justin? <sighs> Let's do it. Justin's job is haunted house realtor. Oh, thanks so much for being here today. I'm so excited to interview. Uh, what what was your name again? Gern Blanston. Gern. Gern. Wow, interesting name, Gern. I like that. It's very cool. Well, Gern, um, I'm not going to waste your time. You're a busy guy, and uh, I want to make the most of this. So I just want to start by saying thank you for sending in your resume. I've read it over. I'm very excited to talk to you. We've got a really great opportunity here, and hopefully at the end of this interview, we'll find if you're a good fit. Sound good? Sounds great. Yeah, I'm very excited awesome. to be here. So starting off, you know, like I said, I've read your resume, very extensive, very impressive. I want to know, like, what is your favorite part about working in the real estate industry? <clears throat> oh, man. <sighs> you know, uh, it's the, me, all the different people that I get to meet is, is real special and specifically the, the, the first time buyers, like just to see when we find that, that house for them. That thing that they've been waiting for, they've been dreaming about. And you can just see that sparkle in their eye. Man, nothing nothing gets me up and going in the morning like like chasing that high. It's beautiful. It's beautiful getting people that first home. I tell Absolutely. You, something special. Well, obviously, it's a tough market out there right now due to mm-hmm. the economy. How have the recent interest rate hikes affected you and your clients? Poorly. Fair enough. You know, what do you, what do you think? What sort of relief are you looking for well in, you know i I'd, yeah i'd love for you know uh the the fed uh, to adjust things i'd love for that consumer price index to you know uh, correct itself and, and to come down a little bit so that we could see some lower uh, interest rates uh help with the uh help with the uh the mortgage uh the lenders you know all those all those things that make it so hard you know if you can uh if, if you were pre-pandemic you were you were locking yourself in at maybe a 
a, a two five three three five, you know, and now you know you're lucky if you can get under a seven percent, and it's just it's tough. So Brutal. it's it, it it's really making it uh, it's really making it hard. You're seeing a lot of cash offers, you know, uh, coming in and beating out, you know, people who really want something because uh, they just. Uh, it's you know you don't know who's going to get approved because of these uh, these interest rates. So yeah. I would really like to see it come down this year. Would be nice. Would be real nice. I agree. Hopefully we could see that level out a little bit. Yeah. So when it comes to showing potential buyers a home, it's easy for them to get overwhelmed and let's face it, absolutely terrified. How do you work through these emotions with buyers? <clears throat> um, well, you know, I like to. I like to sit them down. I'll take them. It's a little, it's a little, you know, non-traditional, a little uh, kind of out there. But I'll, I'll take them into the bathroom and I'll sit them down in the tub, and I'll say, close your eyes and imagine that water is just running over you. Imagine you're sitting here in your shower and you're, you know, does this feel right? And and water, water is such a uh, a soothing resource. It's such a, a, a such a calming. It's something that everyone relates to, and and typically people will the the, the rhythmic, almost hypnotic nature of water uh, really gets people to kind of just put themselves in what this could be and take themselves out of the the rat race that is looking for homes. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. As you view a property for the first time, you undoubtedly see some horrifying and grotesque things, especially mm. in your niche area. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare yourself to visit these homes? Uh, <clears throat> I like to do my research. Uh, I like to I like to know. I'll uh, I'll often look at the reports uh, that are are published. You know, um, from all bodies that publish these reports. Uh, not only the uh, you know the MS uh, uh, the Not only what? the, huh? The what? The uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me one second. My internet is uh, shoddy here. Uh, yeah. I heard you say <coughs> MSNBC. Uh, no, it's not what I was uh, I was going to say. So uh, anyway, I, I apologize. The connection uh, glitched for a second. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a specter in here or something. Um, Anyway, uh, the question was, uh, uh, how do I prepare myself? I, I look at all the reports that are published by uh, all the different agencies that publish these reports uh, from, you know, the real estate agencies all the way down to, you know, anyone who has done investigations in the house for anything that might have gone wrong. And, uh, you know, I like to I like to be prepared and I like to be able to have the answers to answer the any questions that my clients throw at me. Nice. Very good. Of all the dead bodies you've seen in your line of work, mm. what was the one that made you most uncomfortable? That's a direct question, and I respect you for asking that. Thank you. It's my job. Thank you. Um, uh, there was one. Uh, there was one where I walked into the house, <clears throat> and there was uh, a, a body that was sitting on the couch, right, and like legs crossed, arms kind of propped up on the couch, and it just didn't have a head. And, uh, yeah, it was just like nothing, nothing from the neck up. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, there was, turns out there had been a house fire and, uh, the person, uh, passed out on the couch, uh, fire happened. They put it out, uh, and they happened to put it out, you know, just as it uh, consumed the head. And so it was just this headless corpse sitting on a couch. And it was, Amazing. uh, it was something else. I'll tell you what, uh, definitely had to disclose that in the listing. Obviously, obviously. How do you feel about the Ghost Hunter TV shows and have they helped to hurt your business? You know, they've, I would say they've helped um, from the perspective that, uh, you know, it, it normalizes the fact that there are nice houses out there that could be haunted. Like it's not just creepy old mansions. It's not just houses that are, you know, just like destitute and like in disrepair. There are some really cute fixer uppers, some, you know, some ones that you easily could could come in there for some first time who want to DIY it, roll their sleeves up and really get in there and, uh, you know, and just and just make it look beautiful, make it their own. I think it, it, it shows people that there's a lot of from from craftsmen to Victorians to you know, uh, to, to Dutch colonials, everything in between. There's a lot of really cute 
houses out there. And it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't have to be the stereotypical haunted house. I like it. I like that. All right. One final question. Yes. Uh, Gern. Based on your expertise, which of the following is a selling point and which is a detractor for buyers? A sacrificial blood circle from the occult or poltergeists? Which one? I'm sorry. Which one is a... So which one is a selling point and which one is a detractor? Which one is a selling point and which one is a detractor? Got it. A sacrificial blood circle from the occult or poltergeists? Right. Well, the sacrificial blood circle for the occult, the thing that that people don't realize, a lot of people are just like, well, you know, just a a, a, a commercial grade, you know, uh, solvent will take that out. It won't. uh, It doesn't matter what that's in is is if it's a, uh, you know... Uh, hardwood floor, we're talking pine, you know, maple, ash, whatever it is. If it's in carpet, if it's in, I mean, that stuff gets in the grout on tile. It does not come out. So it, it's, it's, it's tough with the blood circles because you really have to bring in an expert. And believe me, they cost. They do not come cheap. Uh, with the poltergeists, it's a little less physical, a little more metaphysical. And so those are a little bit more easily taken care of. And uh, right now, ironically, the uh, the the market for uh, exorcists uh, and people who deal with poltergeists, um, while everything is going up, uh, you know, uh, cost of, of materials and labors, that's the one industry where costs have come down post pandemic. So, you know, good now's a good time to look for properties that are specifically poltergeist, poltergeist infected. Nice. Well, I got to tell you, Gern, uh, this has been an absolute pleasure uh, meeting with you today. Uh, I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I think I'm, I think we're ready to offer you, uh, you know, the job. I, uh, I'm ready to accept. I mean, I, I, I can't believe that I'm going to be, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, the newest member of, of your team that, uh, of real estate agents that uh, show haunted houses after gruesome murders have been committed in them. Yeah, we 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 simplify with haunted house realtor, but you Got know, that's, it. Okay, you know yeah. that's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm just I was just letting you know what I wanted on my business card. That's you know that makes sense. That's cool. good. That's good for LinkedIn. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Bravo, Justin. Bravo. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I'll give myself a ta-da. You got there. You got there real that, quick and real that was easy. My, so well my insight and my wisdom. <laughs> Let's see what's so what exactly. Which yeah. is, insight is under wisdom. Very good. You know. Very good. Well yeah. done. Excellent work, Justin. Excellent work. <laughs> Woo, I was, was it was fun. funny because I was like, well, it can't just be as easy as just haunted house. There's got to be something more to it. And lo well, yeah. well and behold, it was. Yeah, you got there pretty easy. I was like, yeah, we'll get kind of dark here, you know, but it's good. <laughs> it's good. I also like my interpretation of what these, you know, prompts are, you know, it's like yes. haunted house realtor. I'm like, cool. How many of all the dead bodies you've seen? It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like that's okay. presuming. Yeah, it's presuming that yeah. there is a dead body, not that there's just it's just haunted like. There has well, it's to just be like, a dead body. I'm assuming that's on your resume. That's why I'm asking you a question about it. You know, it's like you right, detailed right, right. that. And it's like, of all the dead bodies, and you obviously have seen countless of them in your niche area. What, uh, <laughs> what, uh, which, which one made you most uncomfortable? Awesome. Uh, well, uh, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? I'm going to rec- uh, recommend uh, Maestro on, oh, um, on Netflix. Now, here's the thing I'll say <clears throat> I gave it, uh, I think I gave it three and a half. Stars, maybe four stars. It, it's a good movie. It, it, is, it is a good movie. My issues with it are, uh, I feel like, I feel like Bradley Cooper didn't quite know what direction he wanted to take it insofar as there are some musical numbers that are kind of surreal. And then there mm. are a lot of, and then the rest of it's based in reality. And I was like, I feel like mm. you typically, I, I see people pick like La La Land, they picked a lane. Like it was yeah. like, we're just going to go into musical numbers. That's what this is. Right. This, I feel like there was like a little, uh, just a little bit of like, I don't know if he quite picked a lane on it. And there was like one or, I think there was one or two and it just, they they felt out of place when it happened. So okay. that was weird. Acting was great. Um, you know, it does follow the kind of the cut and paste of most of these biopics of like <clears throat> young person, Finds their talent, uh, gets the opportunity, meets the love of their life. Uh, things get good for them. All of a sudden, things get too much to handle. They create break the nuclear up, bomb. Create the nuclear bomb. You know the old song and dance. Yeah. yeah. If you've seen Bohemian Rhapsody, if you've seen you know the Elton John Elvis. one, if you like Elvis, yeah, it's all the only it all two biopics that ever pattern. exist. Exactly, but it all follows the same pattern. So it's a little formulaic in that sense. But I will say this. 
I a million percent hope that whoever did the makeup uh, and the hair and makeup uh, and wardrobe for this uh, is nominated and wins because I know there was the whole nosegate thing, but I have never seen a film that does aged makeup as well as this film. Like usually someone, you age someone up and you can tell, you're like, that's just the actor and with wrinkly prosthetic and, you know, it's always in the eyes, how like their yeah. eyes are too shiny. As you get older, they get a little bit more milky, a little more opaque. I don't know mm-hmm. what they did, what technique they used, but Bradley Cooper looked like a 70, 80 year old man in this. It was phenomenal, whoever did the makeup on this. So I, was I would you say you looked like a 70 or 80 year old raccoon. I'm like, right. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> These guys, um, <laughs> which is rocket raccoons. Uh, you know, his main, his, <laughs> his main line, his main catchphrase, catchphrase. Yeah. These, these guys. guys. <laughs> um, beep, beep. No, but I would say in general, it, it's a good movie and I would say check it out. Worth, worth the check out. It does have its, you know, it's not a perfect movie, but it's good. Cool. Doug, what do you got? I have nothing. Um, I watched Rustin. That was good. Great recommendation by you. Cool. Um, but I didn't watch anything like super new or noteworthy for me to put down this week. So uh, watch whatever the fuck you want, guys. All right. Stop leaning on us to feed you everything. All right. Take a chance. All right. Take a chance. All right. Cool. Stop well, leaning um, on us. <laughs> I want to uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, hit yeah. that like button to show YouTube that you like us. Uh, drop comments. Shout out to R- Richie for having a wonderful dialogue about AI and also for saying he really liked uh, the AI uh, uh, versus influencer LinkedIn influencer bit last week. He said he was listening to the very last one where it was all hashtags while he was working out and uh, he laughed out loud. So he said he looked like a weirdo in the gym. So thanks for listening, Richie. We appreciate you, buddy. Um, and so check us out youtube.com slash mind gap podcast. Uh, remember I host a video game stream on Fridays at 8 PM central. Be sure to check us out then. Um, check us out on uh, the link in the description for links to our discord, to uh, our merch and to Patreon and, uh, follow us on all our social medias at mind gap podcast and check out Justin as well. On Instagram at Justin underscore Michael spelled M I K E L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, check us out on any, uh, uh, platform where you can find and consume quality podcasts. We are there and we would love to have you listen to us there as well. Share, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. The big one is sharing. Please let people know that we exist. It goes a long way in helping us grow. And then twoeastaith.com, twoeastaith on all social media, loveandimprovfilm.com and loveandimprovfilm on Instagram. Booyakasha! All right, with that, I'll say, uh, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you, and you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.